I, in, my, in Jeddah, in where I come from, a brother came to me asking for a meeting in my house, which I rarely do. All my counseling is online. Because when you see them face to face, you don't know if he's going to get a gun or a knife or stab you. So he said, I want to meet you. So I said, okay, come. He came with his wife and his mother. And they were newly married. What's the complaint? My mother is not happy with my wife and my wife is not obeying my mother. I said, subhanallah, who's married? You're your mom? I said, yeah, yeah, but she has to obey my mom. She has to ask her permission to... No, no, she's not cooking, Sheikh. She's not your servant. She's not obliged to cook for your mother or for your sister. Only you and your children. But Sheikh, my in the subcontinent. And then the mother spoke. Who sounded like a, a, a reasonable person. The moment she opened her mouth. When I was young, when I got married, they mistreated me. They made me work like a maid. I had to serve 20 people. And I said, Subhanallah, were you happy? She said, no. So then why are you treating your daughter-in-law the same fashion? Because I was treated like this. Subhanallah. Because they wronged you. You want to wrong someone else? Fear Allah. Subhanallah, people don't think. They only want what serves them. The hell with everybody else. I just want my water. If you guys don't drink and die, tough luck. This is wrong. This is not how things happen. So if she wants to go to visit her parents, allow her. If she wants to go out for something يعني, that is halal, especially if you're يعني, allowing her and, or be with her more than great. If the Prophet ﷺ prohibited men from stopping their wives from attending the masjid. So if your wife wants to go to the masjid, you cannot pre say, don't go. The Prophet says, you cannot let her go. So what's more important, the masjid or her father's house? Yeah, be, be logical. Number 11, 10, who cares, who's counting? <laughs> Number 10. <laughs> it's even worse. Oh, yeah, I'm burning the whole side through. MashaAllah. One of <clears throat> your wife's rights over you to be jealous. What? Yes. Women love men who are jealous. Well, Sheikh, I thought that they don't like this. No. What they don't like is when you wake up in the morning and say, you take the children to school, I want to sleep. <laughs> How come they take the children to school? You go and bring the groceries. You go and talk to the utility company, pay the bills, go to the bank. She's going to deal with men. So yeah, that's okay. I, at least I get enough time to go and play PlayStation with my boys and watch TV and A'udhu Billah. You have to have jealousy. This is one of her rights that you protect her, that you are the man. She's not married to another woman. She's married to a man who protects her, who takes care of her, who is the guardian of the house. But jealousy must be governed. I know men who are psychopath. He says to his wife, whenever he comes to the room, who are you talking to? She's uh, Alina, my friend. Let me listen. <laughs> For what? I want to know if he's not a man. What do you mean? You, you, you're accusing me? After all these years? I said, did you see anything wrong? I said, no, but you can never be sure. You have to always, you know, maybe, subhanallah. This is haram. This is jealousy that Allah hates. But if there are traces, there are signs then this jealousy is within place. What you're doing is sick. So yes, it has to be governed in the proper channels and there are ways of that, but we cannot explain it now. Number 10, men have needs and so do women. So you have to fulfill her needs, intimacy, her needs in bed. I get problems for women my husband did not touch me for six months. Why? Maybe he's impotent. He said, no, he spends all day long watching pornography. A'udhu billah. And he does the secret habit. Oh, this guy is sick. 
why is that? Why is this? And we talked to him, said, Sheikh, khalas, I, I'm, I have a house, I give her money, I have everything for her. Yes, but she needs a man. This is what marriage is for. Otherwise, we would have married by correspondence. She's in Australia and I'm in America. Khalas. This is marriage enough through Skype. How are you? Fine. No, this is, it doesn't work like this. She ha and this is why scholars say, at least you have to have intimacy with her once every four days. As if you had four wives. So three nights with your wife, the fourth is with her. So this is the least that could be happening. And this is why people must be considerate. Because you have rights and she has rights as well. If your rights were little and you don't feel the need, she may feel the need. So don't force her to look for it somewhere else, may Allah forbid. Number 11, finally, alhamdulillah. Uh, you have to be appreciative to your wife. Whatever she does, when was the last time you said thank you? Rarely. When she does a good meal, do you say thank you? It's an excellent meal. You did a good job. I said, no, this is the norm. Why should I? When she does a bad meal, I would say this is bad. This is not good. The, Allah, the Prophet says, Islam, he who does not thank people, does not thank Allah. So you have to show this form of appreciation to your wife when the house is clean, when the kids are always tidy and with their hair clean and they're washed and ready to sleep and the food is good, your clothes are ironed, everything is perfect. What do you say? Ah, there is dust on the cupboard. What is this? Some brothers are like this. I know my, one of my relatives, I would not call his uh, relationship. Whenever he enters his home, the first thing he does, he goes down to the carpet and takes a small, tiny, little white thread that no one sees. And he does... Everything is clean and sparkling. He sees only the faults. He's like a fly, falls only on dirt. Doesn't see the good picture. No, this is not right. Now, we move on to the rights of the spouse, of the man, of the husband. But seriously, I don't know the time frame. We've spent one hour for the sisters, so that they won't shoot me now. <laughs> now, whatever I say, khalas, alhamdulillah, I gave you one hour. What would you want more? Huh? Now we talk about men. As stated earlier, men have more rights than women. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal made them superior and gave them more rights over women. So they have equal rights, but men have an extra level, an extra edge. This is what Allah says in the Quran. So what does it mean? First, you have to, as a wife, obey him in what is considered to be natural, bil ma'roof, whatever is uh, um, ordinary or accepted. Allah says in the Quran, men are in charge of women by right of what Allah has given one over the other and what they spend of maintenance from their wealth. Secondly, so obeying him is a must. Secondly, that she surrenders herself whenever he asks her for intimacy. Because the urge of men wanting women is far urgent and stronger than women wanting men. This is why if you have 30 men in a circle and you get Miss Universe walking in the middle of them, even if you have sheikhs, huh? they, would, oh. they would turn their eyes because it's something here. But if you have 30 women and you get Tom Cruise, for example, or anyone who is extremely manly and handsome, and maybe five or six women would look and the rest would not look because they are based on being bashful, being shy, being modest, while men are not. 
This is human nature. So men are exposed to fitna far more than women. When you go out, this is, this is why men are not ordered to wear the hijab. Because women can look at men, not the other way around. Women, men cannot look at women. This is why they are supposed to cover. The fitna is greater. So a wife must not refuse intimacy with her husband. Allah will curse her. Oof. The Prophet said, والسلام, whenever a man calls his wife for intimacy and she rejects him, the angels will curse her until sun sunrise. All the night, may Allah curse you, may Allah curse you, may Allah curse you. And she's sleeping in the, in the bed and she's being cursed by angels because of this. What does this tell you? It tells you that this is an important thing that women, even if she doesn't love him, even if she hates him, even if he does whatever he does, she knows that this is her responsibility to Allah. You want paradise? The Prophet said, a woman, when she prays her five prayers, fasts Ramadan, protects her chastity, obeys her husband, she will enter paradise. That's it. Poor things. But men, oh, you have to pray in the masjid, you have to enjoin and forbid evil you have to provide for your wife for your children you have to take care of your mother and father you have to provide for them you have to so many things in order to get to a uh, paradise but women have only four things to us men it's easy no it's not easy it's as difficult as jihad because she has to tolerate your bad breath when was the last time you brushed your teeth your beard, even if you have a beard, why don't you put perfume? Why don't you shampoo it? Why don't you put some balsam in it? Do something. And your belly, mashallah, is like two meters ahead of you. Why, when do you go to the gym? Why don't you work out? Take care of yourself. But she does this also, despite of all of this, seeking the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. Number three, she must, this is the husband right, Protect his name, protect his honor. Now, we know that chastity is something between her and Allah, but there's an extra edge because she's carrying his name in the sense that she's his wife, not that he, she is taking his family name. This is haram in Islam. Allah says, let's move on because we have so many. Number four. One of the husband writes that she does not admit to my house anyone with whom I do not want. So for example, she wants her uncle to come and visit her. And she knows I don't like her uncle. And I tell her, don't let your uncle come. Why? I have my reasons. Whose house is it? It's my house. So the Prophet says, alayhi salatu was salam, it is not permissible for a woman to admit any person in her house without his permission. So this is something that is fixed. You cannot, yani, let's negotiate. No, I will not allow people in without my husband's permission. Number five, she should take care of his money. So I leave my wallet with my wife, a big mistake. But I trust my wife, she should fear Allah Azza wa Jal and not abuse this trust by taking money and going to the mall, buying a wedding dress, buying jewelry, buying this and that without my knowledge. The Prophet says alayhi salatu was salam, a woman is a shepherd over the house of her husband and his children and she is accountable on the day of judgment over them. So she should fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Spent in things that she must, in food, in utilities, in the house, in medicine, in uh, education, whatever. But things that are extravagant are not permissible. Taking money from your husband and your mother, this is stealing, haram. She says, yeah, but my father is poor and he needs food. 
yeah, you take your husband's permission. He doesn't allow me. <laughs> Whose money is it? His money. Khalas. You cannot take without his permission. Number six. I hate it when people note down things like this. This means they're, they're serious about it. This is just playing around. Huh? Don't, don't take it serious. So you have to take care of his children. They are your children. But at the end of the day, imagine. If you manage to get your five-year-old and teach him or her the Fatiha, Every time when they are 60 or 70 years of, of age reading the Fatiha, you are getting rewarded. So don't let your husband do it. You teach him Salat. You teach him fasting. You teach him Seerah. You teach him Hadith. You teach him etiquette. Don't always think of this dunya of I'm doing everything. What are you doing? You're just sitting there on your mobile, WhatsApp, Instagram, and I have to do the work. I have to clean. I have to wash. I have to take care of the children. I have to teach them for school. No, 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 no. This is your God-given gift. Because if you think of the future, not only the ajr, the long-term investment. I can put my money in a short-term investment, put one ringgit, get 1.1 ringgit, alhamdulillah. But if I put it in a long-term investment and make a factory or a farm that will produce after 10 years, but tenfold than this quick investment, I have to be smart. Your children are your investment. So take care of them. Number seven, remain home and we've gone through this you cannot leave home without his permission not without your visa card huh you cannot leave home without his permission so and when and women usually become agitated when they hear this say sheikh he's, he's not cooperative he's not why should i beg from him what listen a man is a big child if you know how to treat children, wallah, you play with him like a ring in your finger. Seriously. When your child, you're feeding him, mm -mm. you shove it down his throat? No. He said, okay. Look, look, look at their airplane. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And he opens his mouth. Of course, your husband, you say, look at this Ferrari. Vroom, vroom. He opens his wallet. So you have to try your level best to treat him as a wise woman. Don't go to his, down to his level. No. Treat him like a child. Whatever he wants, you, you say yes, but you're the master. You're the real master in the house. And it brings me pain when I say this because my wife is the master. <laughs> I try to resist. I can't. She manipulates me. She plays with me like a football and I'm happy. <laughs> she knows how to do it. MashaAllah, I hope she's not watching. <laughs> Number eight. One of the husband's rights is that his woman cannot fast voluntary fasting without his permission. So the Prophet said, والسلام, a woman must not fast without the permission of her husband as long as he is present. But if he's traveling on a business trip for a month, should I call him and say, listen, uh, tomorrow is Monday, can I fast? No, he's not there. So voluntary fast. If I'm fasting Ramadan, making up Ramadan, you don't need his permission. He cannot force you to break your fasting. This is something that is known to all of you. Number nine, a woman must show her gratitude and never ever show her ingratitude. Why? The Prophet said specifically for women, but it can also be cascaded to men. But the norm is women do have this a lot. The Prophet said, O women, give charity. Why? For I have seen that you from the majority of the people of hellfire. The women said, why is that, O Prophet of Allah? Why are we women the majority of hellfire? So the Prophet said, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husband. They are ungrateful to their companions, the husband, and ungrateful for good treatment. The Prophet explains, if you are kind 
to one of the women for a lifetime, then she sees one undesirable thing in you, she will say, I have never had anything good from you. This is nature, human nature in some women, not all of them. But wallahi, I've seen this. I've sat with so many counseling sessions and they, the minute they pick up the phone or we start the session, my husband did this, my husband did that, he never brought me a gift, he never did, 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 did. I said, okay, I will kill your husband because he doesn't have anything good in him. He said, no, 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 Sheikh, he has a lot of things that are good. He said, you only, you only mentioned the negative things. He said, yes, because this is counseling session. <laughs> why, why should I tell you that he's kind, that he's loving, that he's caring, that he is honoring my parents? Do you imagine he got my mother a present and he, my father, he gave him a uh, hundred thousand ringgit as a loan and he uh, made my younger uh, brother work in his company. He has a lot of good things, subhanAllah. But all what you succeed in saying are the negatives, the shortcomings. This is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ is warning from. So a good woman does the opposite. I know women in my family and elsewhere. Whenever the husband comes home, she greets him at the door. MashaAllah, may Allah give you wealth and health and bless your, your money and bless your power and your children. Ya Allah, Ab Abu so and so, you know, uh, out of respect, the wife calls her husband the father of Ahmed, for example. Abu Ahmed, may Allah Azza wa Jal bring you Jannah. The guy says, I've been shopping for two hours. And I have two big bags of groceries and it's difficult. I'm going up and down, up and down the stairs. But the moment she says this to me, Wallahi, I feel I'm in paradise. And the same thing happens when a man <coughs> is served food and the husband eats the first. What is wrong with you? The food is wow, subhanAllah, so delicious. Where did you get it from? She said, I, I cooked it. She said, no, 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 don't lie to me. No, no way you cooked this. It's masterpiece. I'm not going to finish it. No, no, I'm going to put it in the guest uh, room. This is too much. How would she feel? Wallahi, she would feel that she has the whole world in her hand. It's diplomacy. It's compassion. It's what comes out of your mouth that makes your house a living hell or a paradise. Every time I have guests in the house, I have this tendency, myself as a husband, I don't like my wife to cook. Why? Because I don't like to see her spending two or three hours in the kitchen. For what? For guests? I pay money. I get one sheep for 1,000 reals, halas. Eat rice and sheep, eat, and we will have a lot of food left over. But for my wife to go and spend three hours cooking and fixing, so what do I do after the guests go? I come to her and I say, Ya Allah, if you just heard about the food, they were shocked. They said that this is the most beautiful food they have ever tasted. And it is lousy, but I'm lying. Huh? Because I cannot say anything else, I lie. See, they said the food was good, the food was great, and they want their wives to call you to know how the recipe, how would she feel? Khalas. Three hours, gone down the drain. So you have the ability to make your spouse happy, whether you're a man or a wife or, or a woman. But you have to train yourself. You have to respect yourself, respect your spouse. Also, know that this is a teamwork. It is not a one-man show. And I conclude this uh, lecture of mine with a story that I always mention about my wife. May Allah Azza wa grant her long life and dies before me. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, she's going to kill me definitely. So I think I'm going to die first. But Alhamdulillah. <laughs> How many years do we have to live? Every time she cooks, most of the time it's good. Sometimes, you know, human nature, you make error. The food is uneatable. 
Wallah. You cannot eat it. This is, some, this is not even good for human consumption. <laughs> she puts the food, salad, and I eat only one course. I don't eat rice, and only one plate. So I take one spoon, two spoon, three spoon, and a lot of salad, 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 until it's finished. And I said, MashaAllah, Zakumullah khair, food was good. And she's watching me like this, and she says, liar. <laughs> She said, she said, excuse me? She said, why do you lie? Why don't you say that the food is bad? I said, no, it's good. She said, no, it's not good. It's not good for human consumption. She said, I was, yeah, she says that about herself. She said, I, I did, I messed up. Apologize, but why don't you say the truth? I said, listen, I don't take you when I travel. I travel the world. I never take you on my travels. I never take you to restaurants. I never take you to the beach side, which is 10 minutes away from my home. My kids beg me, please, that you're stabbing me. Don't, this is something wrong in me. I don't bring you jewelry. I don't, I'm a, I'm a bad husband. The only thing I'm good is, is lying. <laughs> so do you expect me, after you tolerating all my shortcomings, to come and say, for food that you spent an hour and a half in the kitchen doing, that it's bad? Wallah, I'll be crazy. This is how life goes. This is how you feel the love. That you have shortcomings, she has shortcomings, we're even, alhamdulillah. Don't hold one against her, she holds 10 against you. And may Allah Azza grant those who are already married the best of marital life and those who are interested in getting married, the best of the wives to be the coolness to their eyes. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatu al-ilmi ilayhi aslam. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.